Welcome back, everybody. And uh, we're kicking off our week speaking to the wonderful Kim Rhodes. You may know Kim from Supernatural. You, like my daughter, knows Kim from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, which I'm sure <laughs> I've seen many times. Uh, my daughter is 16, so it's been a little while. But, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, she's... It's, re it's experiencing a resurgence, however. Um, it's, it's, it's come back around on Disney Plus. So there you That's go. There's a whole new generation of kids looking at Hotel Mayhem. Including my son, because my daughter is uh, trying now to introduce him. He's 11. So she wants to introduce him to all of the shows that she grew up watching. So Zach and Cody's on the list. So uh, but he'll, he'll be watching you in just a you know, short little while. So <laughs> welcome, welcome to the program. Nice having you. Thank you, Alan. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, me too. And uh, I, in doing my prep, you know, I, I, I tend to uh, go on IMDb Pro and I tend to watch all sorts of interviews that you have done. And as soon as I, I heard you talk, I'm like, yep, yep, my kind of person. I definitely want to have him on. Uh, and the, the particular, I'm, I'm going to mention one thing. I, I wrote it down. You were saying that uh, da, 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 the, the one rule of, uh, of being on set is don't be a dick. I completely don't agree. Don't be a dick or run into furniture. Don't be a dick well, or run into And if you have to pick one, run into the furniture. Yeah, don't be yeah. a dick. Yeah. Well, I'm sure there's a story there in terms of the run into a furniture. How did that come about? Oh, no. Don't you know, just know your lines and don't bump into furniture. That's And I can't remember where that classic piece of advice came from. But I'm like, and if you have to run into furniture, run into furniture. I run into a lot of furniture accidentally, but uh, I try really hard not to be a dick. Uh, yeah, it's always a good rule of thumb to follow. Uh, you found that that serves you well. <laughs> it does. Well, because so, so altruistically, um, mm -hmm. when I'm, uh, for me personally, and this is, uh, I'm going, I'm already going into the, the, like the layers of the onion here. When I'm a mm -hmm. dick, it means mm -hmm. I'm experiencing fear. I'm experiencing a belief that there is a lack of resources and therefore I need to get what I need to be okay and I'm not okay. So if I act on that fear, I reinforce the fear. If I act like a dick, I am reinforcing the voice in my head that says, you're not okay, you don't have what you need to be okay, you gotta take what you need to. And so I, I'm, I'm, I am not able to be of service I'm not a lot of fun. And I also am creating this feedback loop of I'm not okay, I'm not okay, I'm not okay, I'm not okay. Because ultimately that starts inside my head. And no matter how big a dick I am, I will never make the outside world what it needs to be to fix the fear in my head because it's in my head. So, uh, so don't be a dick is yes, like I said, altruistic because Everybody needs to get along on a set and everybody's working hard and any way I can contribute to that is good. But it's also very selfish in that I can't be who I need to be if I'm settling into my fear. It doesn't create an atmosphere to for me to be then artistically generous. Yeah, I certainly understand that. I, uh, it's, it's a nice reminder because I, I find myself that I am a control freak, apparently. I didn't realize that until I had kids. And then I realized that I'm a control freak. Um, in that I feel a sense where if I am not listened to, it, because I have important information to, uh, <laughs> to give. I have important life lessons to teach. I need for them to do the things the way that I'm asking them to do it. And if they don't, then I feel the lack and I feel out of control. And then I start turning into a dick. Yep. So that's that's where my uh, stuff comes in. And I, I constantly need to remind myself of let go. You're never going to get the amount of control that you think you want to have. They don't need it, neither do you. Relax, man, you're okay. So it's, yeah. it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and... Uh, I, I also found uh, kind of uh, a few things interesting. You know, we mentioned Zach and Cody, uh, the sweet life of Zach and Cody. Excuse me, to be to be full with it. Um, I I saw that uh, when you were going to college, you were going uh, to be an English teacher. 
and you kind of took your first uh, acting class just to you know make sure that you're a fun uh, teacher and uh, it kind of went from there which we'll come back to in a second but i found uh, the interesting uh, kind of uh, symmetry of life that uh, a part of you wanted to be a teacher because you wanted to be with kids i think one of the you know first shows was i, I think you had a soap opera and then you've done a kid show mm -hmm. and then you know a lot of people know you for uh, for the sweet life so life kind of combined the two things that uh, you liked into a career i like it yeah no it's all and and um even forward uh, a lot of my connection right now is uh, with with convention work and online connect where I feel like I'm really given the opportunity to teach about the world and from my own personal experience and ideally help people not make mistakes that I made that are painful, no matter what they want to go into doing. Um, I'm also teaching horseback riding in real life now because it's the because it's the only way I can get outside and uh, it's the only way I can afford to keep <laughs> to stay on the horse I ride is to start a barter system yeah. so so yeah I think but I think all humans are teachers we we all have that desire like you said to be heard and I think it comes from a place of connection. And ultimately, when you connect with a person and offer them vulnerable willingness to listen and to express yourself, you're teaching. It's true. And then, you know, we'll kind of combine that with our insatiable need as artists to be seen and to be appreciated. <laughs> and then you have a whole mess on your so, yeah. um uh, I, I, again, you know, going into your background, I really, uh, really understood that feeling of wanting to be and uh, wanting to be in the center of attention, wanted to get attention for uh, who you are and the things that uh, you're doing. I remember looking at a photo of myself, I think I was three, and, uh, you know, my parents kind of, uh, uh, we were at a holiday somewhere, and, you know, here's this little kid with a microphone in his uh you know, a hand in front of a, you know, big group of people. And I don't remember exactly what I was doing, but I wanted to do it. And yep. that's, the, that's the main thing that I remember. I always wanted to be an actor. I knew that it was not a thing. It's just like, yep, that's me. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I have always had big feelings that were inappropriately expressed and uncomfortable for me. So acting gave me an environment where I could have those emotional experiences safely and people wouldn't tell me to stop having them because it's in the script and I get to have it. See, it says right here on the page, I'm allowed to have this. Yeah, uh, unless you run into furniture or it, but otherwise, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's true. Yeah, we, we uh, kind of, it's a safe space. Uh, you know, we need to obviously make sure that, uh, <clears throat> Uh, we understand that there is control uh, where we're we're taking certain precautions, but yeah, it's 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 a way for you to play out uh, whatever and uh, not have the responsibility of dealing with the consequences. Yeah, <laughs> that too, that too. <laughs> so uh, I, I like that part. So where does uh, where does your love of acting come from? I don't you know we're we're named the love of acting. So where does yours? Uh, I know. Come from? Bless your heart for I don't. No. Huh. I love stories. Mm -hmm. I love finding the piece of me that is both universal and specific when I tell a story. I love the freedom of connecting with the people I work for. In other words, the audience. Um, it, is a, it is a gift that I can give without depleting myself. Uh, it is silly. It is fun. It is a gift for me to be able to do. Um, I will admit, I truly only love acting when I'm doing stage. 
Mm -hmm. uh, television and film, there isn't a lot of acting that goes on. The majority of television and film is not working, either trying to get work yeah. or the details of making sure the mark is hit and the and this and that and your setup and this is moved in like acting kind of sneaks through the cracks when when i'm doing television and film it's really stage work where i feel transported when i when i feel that i just get to get on the machine and write it and then hop off at curtain call yeah. um yeah, so I don't I don't know. It's been a long time since I've loved acting because I feel like it's been a long time since I've gotten to act. That's true. Yeah, uh, COVID uh, didn't help um, from. Oh that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and that that's a whole other nightmare where it's just like, oh, what the actual fuck is going on out there? Um, so yeah, I'm not in charge of when I work. Sadly, I wish I were, but I'm not, and that's one of those. Yeah. <sighs> You know, I have to remember that's not acting. Mm -hmm. That's the job, but mm -hmm. that's not acting. So when, you know, the love of acting right now, I fucking don't like, oh no, I still love acting. I just don't love this process necessarily right now. No, I, I, I certainly understand. And again, you, you kind of, you know, you love doing theater. You love doing Shakespeare. That's, that's how you yeah. started. So yeah. then going from Shakespeare into, you know, you know, doing a, a uh, I know you've done quite a few uh, kind of co-star and guest star uh, roles over the years, so I, I can understand where you just don't have ability to uh, to do much. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I one of the reasons why I, I didn't uh, get to do my high school play, which is Fiddler on the Roof, is because I immigrated to the country as this great actor at 14. I was playing main roles. I was playing multiple main roles in the same production. And then I go and I audition for Fiddler on the Roof, and they give me the role of what I called at that time furniture, which yeah. is you're a Russian soldier and you stand over there and you have no lines. And I said, what the hell do you mean? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm me. What? And I refused. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> used uh, to do uh, to do it, and uh, that you know stupidity uh, probably ruined my uh, my you know career in high school in terms of theater because I never got into it. So yeah, but I, I I understand the feeling of when you think you have a lot to offer and you're just not given the opportunity to do so. Yeah, and it's and that's an aspect of this. And so mm -hmm. and so the challenge to maintain the lifestyle is to separate my ego from the art. And you know, I tell people a lot of times we're like, any advice going into acting? Like, yeah, make sure you're happy now. Because if you're waiting for something to give you permission to be happy, you wait until the world changes and aligns. But if you find a way to be happy now, it will always be now and you will always be happy. Yeah, it's a difficult thing, especially with uh, with the acting community, because it's always these. I just I'm so close. I'm so close to that break. Uh, I, I just this particular edition, that's it. And then it's going to all of these 25 years of hard work. It's all going to be worth it, right? We get into that mind frame, and then a lot of people are disappointed continuously. So, well, and that so there's that's the you said a very important word right there, the word worth. Yeah. And if my actions now yeah. only have value or worth mm -hmm. based on what happens after I take those actions, then I am fucked. Mm -hmm. I have to find a way, if I am going to maintain any sanity or joy in my life, of making this action right now, what would make me happy right now? And as a result, I have had some spectacularly wrong auditions because I've been like, oh, you know what would make me happy? <laughs> and I do it and they're like, what the actual fuck did you just do? And I'm like, oh, I thought it was creative and exciting. They're like, you have three lines. Your job is to move the courtroom scene forward. I'm like, yeah, but I decided that maybe I would have this relationship. Like, Stop that. We don't want any of that. And I was like, cool. Then I don't want your job. But I had fun auditioning for it. Yeah, um, I, I, again, I, I love when you talk about auditions and uh, how much you love the auditioning process. Um, yeah. 
It's, I mean, honestly, it's, it's weirdly better now with COVID because it's just, I mean, it's a pain in the ass to set up. My husband sets up a whole backdrop. He, we shoot it. We, he, tr- tr- I mean, at this point, I don't even, I just skip the other person's lines because my daughter who is 13 has insisted on doing the other pe- person's lines. Just not a great reader. So we'll do a couple versions of her reading the lines. And then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to pick up a few where nobody, like it's such a clusterfuck. But even that is somehow better than the spinning of sitting in a room, yeah. trying to stay in my head space, trying not to look at all of the other people and decide if they would be better at the job than I would be, trying to figure out what they want in the room. They don't even know what they want. They don't, they want me to show them what they want. They don't, they don't know. Like, did I do it right? Did I not do it right? Do how do I not invest in the idea? Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's it it's a it's a really weird process, uh, and it really kind of uh, I love it because it's kind of the mirror that you're putting up to yourself because it exposes a lot of uh, things that you <laughs> need to work oh. on. So, uh, and I'm not talking from the active yeah. perspective. I'm talking from the human. No, from the human perspective. Like, why do I, why do I base my worth on yep. their perception of who I am? Yep. So um, I remember going to an audition for a role that I, I, I actually got in a pilot. I went to an audition. This is second audition, uh, and I see another, you know, man uh, that's reading for the same role. You know, I'm white, I'm 185 pounds, uh, I'm six feet tall. He's, uh, you know, African-American. He's about 230, muscular, great looking guy. Uh, I think maybe 6'1 or 6'2. And I, I'm just chuckling to myself thinking, well, they definitely wanted to see variety. That's- and then I, um, we do, we do the, 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 uh, the audition. And then I get kind of a, a call back and uh, they start talking to me. And, I asked them about the role and they read to me what they wrote. And <laughs> basically as you know, this particular character, you know, he's a professor. It's a guy that all the guys want to be like. It's a guy that all the ladies want to fuck. He is this, you know, uh, smile that brights up the, uh, the room. And I'm just hysterically laughing to myself, trying desperately not to show it. And the, the only thought that goes through my mind is like, why the fuck am I here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I end up getting it because I I guess I showed them something that then they changed their mind. And the most hilarious thing to me is that they end up rewriting kind of the description <laughs> of the person to match me. I'm like, okay, thanks. I'm not going to take any of that personally. That's not, that's not painful at all. Yeah, it's just... They, they don't know. Uh, I, 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 and I don't know, again, you, you probably have the same experiences and just a lot more of them. But anytime I talk to casting directors or I go and take workshops or I you know audition and you see kind of uh, who's being cast, you get a sense that the casting directors do not know what they want. And one person, wow. just finish that thought. So one yeah. person is going to, we're in a workshop, we're all looking at uh, the self tapes that we uh, we created and everybody as a group is, is viewing it. I'm viewing it and I see a person making an acting choice, doing this. That's an acting choice. It's a premeditated, it wasn't natural. I see it, I read right through it. We finish watching and the casting director, well known, cast a ton of stuff that we've all seen, said, oh my God, that was so amazing, that was so natural. And I'm thinking, what the fuck are you talking about? I could read through that and I saw that it was premeditated. So the more of these experiences I have, the more I get to your point, which is another one of my favorite lines from you, is confidence is a combination of deep love and not giving a fuck. (laughs) Wait, I said that? You said that. You said that in an interview on uh, uh, Speak LA uh, or something uh, to that. uh... Bring, oh my, yes. I think that was probably, uh, yes. Camille's was that Camille's thing? Um, th- I like that. Confidence comes is a, is a combination of caring deeply and not giving a fuck. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I want to write that down. I'm smart sometimes. 
we're, we're going to have it, you know, right below here as, you know, when it comes out and edited, it's going to be right there so people can write it down. But uh, that's the only kind of thing that I, I get to a point where when I'm doing a uh, an audition, now I stop putting the what do they want in my mind and I'm just, how does it feel to me? What does it feel like? I'm going to do it the way that I choose. I'm going to have fun with it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm going to be me. And yeah. that's where I came to. I think you uh, you were alluding to that same point. Yes. Yes. And it's, and well, I was thinking it also often has nothing to do with my acting. Like mm -hmm. I have not been given, I remember there was a pretty impressive job that would have been life changing that I didn't get because they just cast the female lead and this would have been a supporting lead and I had her exact haircut and color. Do and people not realize that you can actually no, change those no. things? Nobody cha nobody changes nobody nobody they don't it's it's like they don't have time to think has been my experience. There's hmm. like like no she looks too much like our lead actress don't cast her and uh, okay Okay. I mean, there's also been times that I have knowingly bombed, like knowingly gone in and been like, I know for a fact, this is not what they want. Mm -hmm. I am going to make them uncomfortable with these choices and I'm going to, f and I will not get this job. I'm going to fucking do it anyway, because that's how passionately I believe in my choices right now. Um, mm -hmm. I did that once okay uh and i did indeed not, and it was down to like it was for a series okay. it was down to the three of us to play this role on a series and i was like i will not play your reindeer games i oh. will not capitulate to the script i mm -hmm. will not say these words i specifically have asked to have mm -hmm. a conversation with the writer before and nobody is ever late so i'm changing the fucking words wow yeah, I did it. Oh, you did not. Oh, oh, oh. And then, so just to finish up the story, uh, so they did, so they cast another woman. They shot the thing. They put it in front of the, the test audience and the test audience hated it because of all the things I wanted to talk to. I was like, I know I'm an actor, but I'm not always an idiot. Yeah. Like, when I'm, and I'm also really easy. I mean, mm -hmm. I am pretty easy. So when I really put my foot down and say, no, mm -hmm. this is wrong and needs to be addressed. I can give me five minutes to just say, maybe I might have a point. Yeah. <clears throat> Did they come back to you and saying you were right? I know the answer to that question. No, no, I found out like, through because I because I met I saw somebody involved with the project and went so whatever whatever happened to that that thing that they yeah. and, and the person went oh oh no it was no <laughs> no so bad yeah. so bad yeah I I there's a part of me that wants to feel bad the other part of me says mm, no I don't feel bad about that. I know. Well, it happens a lot. I see a lot of uh, like well-intentioned passion projects that are actually people writing about a passion that they have secondhand, like their child might have this condition or they might feel strongly about people who have and it's and it's like unless you really have done a lot of research your lack of experience with the thing that you're writing about, especially around a passion piece, is probably going to show. Yeah. And then it's not going to be authentic. It won't land. And that's it. No? Yeah. Okay. Love yeah. it. Uh, please tell uh, please tell the audience. Uh, I, again, I heard this before. But please tell the audience about the most incredible audition you've had. It was a year ago. The casting director was blown away. I just I because that's a perfect experience for us to uh, to discuss. Uh, the fuck with that. more more context is the casting director wanted to hug you afterwards. Remember oh, that? I didn't book the job. Right. Yeah. I, oh, oh God, I'm gonna tear up. Yes, I do. Okay, so I um so it was for a pilot, 
Yeah. The character was, I read the script and I fell in love with the script. So I just deeply, I forgot about this audition. Thank you for reminding me of it. So um, I fell in love with the script. I fell in love with the character. I loved everything about it. And I went in and I was working with the casting director. And in the scene, um, I was basically showing up and confessing my love for the other character. and but it was a love that could never be consummated because she was married to another character and uh and who was a politician and obviously she she now we've got a whole world of confusion going on within this little town and da 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 so i i um did it and the casting director literally cried up and she was like uh, or teared up and she, uh, she was like i i need to hug you just because she said, I felt every, I watched, I, I watched it. I watched us fall in love. She's like, I need to hug you after this. And, um, and I did not book it. And I don't know if you know the end of the story. So I'm, you know, on Facebook, a woman who is someone I love deeply, who is an incredibly talented actor and who is a little bit like me announced that she was getting to do this role in this pilot. And I started to cry with happiness. This is how you know I've done some work on myself. And I immediately wrote her and I said, I'm so happy you got this role. I got to audition for this role and I know she's going to be in such good hands with you. And she wrote back and she said, I actually thought of you when I was doing this audition. I thought of you playing this character and I put my out. So, so in a way, it worked out perfectly and I wasn't wrong. I was right for it, sort of. It was yeah. my friend thinking of me while playing this character. Like it's it's just that that like yeah. that porousness of this yeah. industry, right? Is that inspiration and connection and wins come in ways that we don't expect them to look. Yeah. Usually. And I think you mentioned that, uh, again, as much as you love auditioning, now you don't really book jobs through auditioning. You book jobs through people who've seen you and well, say you agree for this. Yeah, I did. So um, so Criminal Minds Beyond Borders, mm -hmm. uh, my friend and former uh, uh, executive producer of Supernatural, mm -hmm. Adam Glass, was working over on he was on the show. He's wonderful. Isn't he awesome? So he was on Criminal Minds Beyond Borders and he had what they call a bottle episode, right? So it's, it's we need to save money by not building any sets. So every scene is going to take and it's usually an interrogation series kind right. of thing. And um, but the problem was there were a lot of words and he had uh, he couldn't waste time. So he brought in Jim Beaver and myself to do it. and they kept saying okay you're gonna you, you gotta but you gotta be good on the words you gotta be and i'm like yes i get it I, i'm an actor i gotta be good we got the script and my character had 65 percent of all of the words just my character i went okay 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 i see so basically i got hired because i could memorize lines and i looked like an authority figure mm -hmm. however the character stayed on and ended up going over to the original Criminal Minds because the writer of that specific episode and I hit it off so well that he then went on to Criminal Minds once Beyond Borders came down and he kept saying, well, you know, on this other show, we had this character that came in as kind of a foil for the team and da, da, da. And finally they said, do you just want to bring that character over? I said, yeah, yeah, let's bring that character over. So that's how I ended up with it. I, I ended up with two shows that I never auditioned for. They just were, can you can you do the job? Because we need somebody to do the job. I can do job. Job I shall do. That's Another what? reason why you don't want to be a dick on set, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you never know when, like if somebody else goes, can she do the job? Be like, she can, but you'll wish she didn't. They're probably not going to call me and offer me another job. Yes, that's, that's understandable. Um... Again, for the people who are watching this, who uh, you know love you from Supernatural, uh, I'm not sure that I've ever spoken to anybody associated with that show that did not have the best things to say about it. In oh, terms yeah. 
the environment, the people, the crew, the writers, everybody loved it. Uh, I'm hoping your experience was, was oh, similar. It was like, it was like, it was like, my birthday and prom, but I got to be the prom queen every single time I was on set. Wow. Uh, that was not a coincidence that it, sh I mean, again, don't be a dick. Yeah. That show would not have gone 15 years if there wasn't genuine passion and love that I don't think was created for the purpose of the sh sh what you saw on screen. I think it was genuine and you just couldn't help but feel it on the screen. Uh, it was, yeah, it was an incredible blessing in my life. Did that start out uh, as a as a recurring or was it a guest star that nope. kind of- It was just like a one-off. Yeah, yeah, it was just a one-off. And I think even then, uh, don't be a dick, mm -hmm. they pulled me back because, not necessarily because they were like, hey, that plucky little Kim Rhodes gal is a winner and we want more of her around. I think it was more, we need someone, we can only get this thing to happen that we need in the plot line if we have someone in law enforcement to make it shorter, because otherwise we can't figure out how to, we need somebody yeah. who we got in law enforcement. Well, we already, that, that chick over there, we know will probably bend rules because she's familiar with the supernatural. Yeah. Bring the cop in. And then they just kept me. That's that's great. Um, I, yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, people always say, Alan, you should stop about your own experiences and just let the guests talk. I'm Who says learning. that? It's your show. That's true. But, you know, actually, the funny part is I remember watching Oprah, you know, a number of years ago. And I remember Oprah doing the same thing because it's a conversation. Uh, so Oprah would share something. The guests would share something. And I was mad at Oprah for saying, listen, I, I, I want to hear the other person talk. And then once I got the show, I'm doing the same thing. So I get it, Oprah. If you're watching my show, I fully understand. Um, Oprah, we got you, Oprah. Yeah. My the the don't be a dick example I was gonna uh, use is that one of my first jobs, not acting jobs. I was a you know IT recruiter working <clears throat> in a, a house of of a guy who was running a consulting company, and I was basically calling a lot of companies, and I was you know booking business, and I, I did uh, fairly well, but. Uh, the the owner, who is a friend, uh, basically ended up saying, look, I'm keeping you around because my kids love you. Uh, because he had two small daughters and they loved hanging out with me and that's why he was keeping me around. So I don't know if it was the work or they I'll just- take it. Yeah, I'm okay I'll with that. Take it. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't rather work with somebody that they like? Yeah, that's, that's it. Um, did, again, knowing kind of, uh, uh, he did soaps, then he did uh, Disney. Uh, and there were some, there were a bunch of sitcoms before the Disney. So yeah, it was soaps. It was sitcom flavor of the week. And yeah. then it was Disney and then it was supernatural. Yeah. So that's yep. my question in terms of that kind of progression, because the industry sees you as one thing. I uh, barely realized that you can actually change your hair. Uh, so did anybody have a problem with you know, the version of you that they saw on soap, sitcom, and then uh, Disney moving over into more dramatic things that are cop related or supernatural related. I have a problem. Nobody had a problem. They just figured I was done and should go die. <laughs> that's, that's a bit of an extreme analysis, but I do remember um, the, uh, the agent that I had coming out here and all the way through Disney. And then once Disney came down and I had a baby and mm -hmm. I got, I remember actually, he actually said, cause one of the agents left the agency and was pilfering talent. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, he hasn't called me and he went, he's not going to call you. You're too hard to get into rooms. Okay. <laughs> and so then I started like saying, well, could I, could I try, started suggesting things that I could audition for. He's like, no, you're not right for that. I'm like, I totally oh, am. Right. Oh, I'm not. But I, so it, it's, it's, it's like once you pop out of this pigeonhole, which I did in my case for age, hmm. they, there's a, there's a, there's a forgetting that you can actually be plugged back into another pigeonhole. Hmm. Um, 
it's and I don't know. It may be happening again now. It may be I I, I don't know. I mean, there there was a period of time that I really managed to pull off authority figure because mm -hmm. that's what I was moving into. But I don't know if with the lull in the in the industry right now there's a lot of very famous people who could be playing roles that i who would be willing to work for scale so i don't know i don't even know if it's a problem so much as it is just a factor of the industry that people want an easy answer like what are you gonna have for dessert chocolate great that's it that's easy if you say well ricotta cheese with strawberry reduction you go what what nah, nah, too hard too hard too hard go back to chocolate and I feel like that's the same way. Sometimes people just don't have the capacity. They don't have any spoons left to think differently. So what drives you to continue doing it? I'm not. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't have, I don't have any drive. I'm open to options. Uh, mm -hmm. I have, I will say that one of the blessings of COVID is I have an incredible voiceover agent now. So that's what this is. This is my voiceover booth. Nice. There it is. Um, and I have, I've done a couple of video games. Uh, I audition very frequently for cartoons. Mm -hmm. And I am, I have discovered a joy for acting that I've never had with on-camera stuff because mm -hmm. I get to be like a, 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 a berserker squirrel who will cut you or a dumb fish that doesn't understand where or you know I get to I get to be um because because I have so much fun with voices and ideas and those extreme choices that I talk about that used to not serve me so well in the rooms serve me really well with voiceover choices mm -hmm. so that's what I'm doing now is I'm just playing I'm just playing I'm just back to the me that spent all of my life at the dog park articulating which i'm gonna get that thing and there's gonna be over there and we're i mean that's that's what i like to do yeah. so uh so that's what drives that aspect is it's fun mm -hmm. um but in terms of acting i'm kind of like i don't know i might be done i i don't i, don't, I genuinely don't know i don't know if it's me or if there's nothing out there or if something is brewing and somebody's just gonna come to it, I, I don't fucking know. And the great thing is, I don't really care right now. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm working on a series of children's books with a friend of mine who's an illustrator. Yay! And uh, and I'm just, you know, finding outlets. And that's the next part, right? So, I mean, you're married to an actor director. So, you know, are there any projects that? Uh, he's not an actor. He's a he's a photographer, actually, photographer and director. Okay. Um, IMDb has some, you know, wrong information. I know. Well, Bless moving. their hearts. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, no, we we very specifically don't. We do photo shoots together. He'll do yeah. photo shoots of me sometimes. And, mm -hmm. um, but uh, but no, he's working on on editing in an arena that isn't so which is great it means that we can help each other and still be objective as opposed to working with each other and starting like the bubbling anxiety getting in on what they're doing mm -hmm. Thank you. That's oh yeah nice. so uh two more questions before i let you go so one deals with your 13 year old uh has she expressed interest in being in the industry i know she's reading uh my daughter who's 16 She's my reader. So, uh, you know, uh, is, is your daughter interested in being a part of this crazy uh, industry? No, my daughter uh, thinks she's a YouTuber. Okay. Yeah, I, I tend to think so as well. But uh, the, the, the checks are, are definitely uh, proving me uh, otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well the well the influence. Yeah, and at this point, I don't even say YouTuber. I say influencer. Like, there's a whole yeah. genre of youtube that yep. isn't connected and informative and taking beauty in my judgmental opinion i'm very like old man yelling at cloud right now because you young people and you're filling up the swimming pool with a bunch of 
geez whiz and the waste that causes and the damage to your why are you and now my daughter and oh god um ah bless the youth and their ever expanding creativity yeah. no she does not want to go in the industry she is um resistant to instruction which is an amazing thing mm -hmm. but it also she's like don't tell me what to do and what to say so she helps me with my auditions sometimes but then she's like this is stupid and i'm done so she would be the actor who would be like i gave you two takes you better have gotten it i'm in i'm gonna be in my trailer <laughs> maybe okay. a good, maybe a good casting director um right Oh, last question. Um, yeah. If you had a chance to kind of go in a, you know, hot tub time machine and uh, and come out and give one piece of acting advice to uh, to a younger Kim, uh, what would it be? Oh, lighten the fuck up. Oh, man. I really, again, back to that, like to bring it full circle, I was so scared. And I so wanted other people's approval to, to make me not scared. And I, I wanted to be taken seriously. So I took myself so seriously and had such deep feelings that I often had ballistically at, oh, bless my sweet little heart. I tried so hard. I wanted so badly to be somebody I wasn't. Oh. So, um, so the advice is like, lighten up and stop trying to put the trappings of the outside world on so that you stop being you and instead take it off because this can only shine. Mm -hmm. This can only shine. So figure out how to take off the shit that's dimming it. Um, that would be my advice to myself. And knowing myself, I would not have heard myself. I would have thought that was advice from an old lady who clearly did not understand what was what and why the fuck was she talking to me and get back in that hot tub and you shouldn't be seen in public in that swimsuit. That's awesome. Uh, Kim, I want to talk to you for another three hours, but uh, let's let's come back and do it, uh, do it again. Thank you so much for jumping on. I really, really enjoyed it. It's my pleasure. Thank you for what you're doing, Alan. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it still feels good, even though I'm working on myself. Anytime somebody says that, I really feel that. Thank you. We're yeah. allowed, but okay, but wait, so wait, so quick before we go. We shouldn't apologize for what feeds our heart. Like, I can't change my heart, it's supposed to feel good when humans connect. It's supposed to feel good when someone says thank you. We shouldn't need it to be okay, and we shouldn't do it because it's obligated. But, oh, for fuck's sake, like take the joy, man, take the joy. It's supposed to feel good. I, I will take the joy and gladly accept it. Taking the joy, good, okay. Uh, thanks to everybody for taking the joy with us on this uh, on this another episode of the Love of Acting. I think we're episode 129, so um, hey, yeah, we're we're making our way to uh, to 150 next. So thank you. Please stay safe, everybody. Let's let's finish off 2020 strong and start 2021 where it will be a lot better. Let's hope for that. Thank you.